Hello and welcome to another episode of Rufus Eats Cheese. Okay, today I thought we'd do something a little different. We have been looking at some really fantastic cheeses uh, and last week we did um, a beautiful champagne fondue with three gorgeous cheeses in there. So what I thought we'd do is we'd take a look at some excellent cheeses you can get at a very reasonable price. So, um, you may or may not know, you may already be, um, if you're in the UK or in Europe, you may already be a cheese aficionado who shops at Lidl. Um, the other cheeses I bought have been really nice cheeses, but fairly expensive. Um, these cheeses here, I think the most expensive piece of cheese here was the Manchego here at £1.79. <laughs> if you've not tried Manchego, it's £1.79. There's absolutely no excuse for you to have not tried it. So what I wanted to focus on really was making a really nice cheese board uh, for Christmas or for a meal, doesn't cost a fortune, and hopefully there should be something here for everyone. So what we tried to cover is, we have over here a garlic herb roulade, which is a very soft cheese. Um, obviously, as the name suggests, it's got garlic and herbs added. That's a really nice cheese for maybe people who want it with something or they perhaps don't like cheese that much but they kind of like that so it's a lovely cheese lovely thing to have um, we've also got a semi soft cheese we've got a nice um, gouda which I have been told by the way I owe you guys an apology I've been calling it gouda I've been told and I apologize if I got this wrong again um, the proper pronunciation is yauda and so uh, sorry if that's incorrect i don't speak dutch but if i did i would definitely eat a lot more of it um yeah so that's a nice um semi soft semi hard cheese we've also then got um the fabulous manchego so this is a sheep's cheese from spain beautiful cheese i wanted something to make a bit of a progression so we've got very soft, semi-soft, and a slightly harder cheese. Um, and then I've seen some people, there's a very popular video here on good old YouTube that has, should we say, some perhaps designer ways of laying out cheese. Um, they've said that you need to have the cheese going from soft to hard, that it should be done clockwise and some other ideas that's to me that's kind of of kind of as ridiculous as eating them in alphabetical order it's complete it's completely bizarre it's it's like weighing them and putting them in numerical order and eating them in that order it's completely random nonsensical thing to do i think you need to eat your cheeses based on your own palate and how, which ones you fancy and with what. But, you know, that's my opinion anyway. So what I thought I would do though is separate. There are quite a lot of people who don't like strong, right, uh, strong bloom cheeses or strong um, blue cheeses. So I've popped those on a separate um, cheese board over here. The idea being that we could have this on one part of the table and we could have this cheese board on another part of the table. This also stops the, the little thing of people going for a piece of this cheese, digging into the brie and getting brie all over the um, the manchego, which is obviously a big no-no. Um, yeah, I think we should probably dive in and start trying some of these out. Uh, I am not going to um, eat these in alphabetical, numerical, or um, the season they were produced or anything else. 
I'm going to eat them um, based on what I fancy first. So personally, I actually really want to try this lovely bit of yaoda. So, mmm. Oh, that is beautiful. Remember, this beautiful piece of cheese, which was originally this size, mm, it's a reasonable wedge of cheese, it was only £1.79. So there's no reason for you to not try it. That is fabulous. Mm. I'm getting a lovely crunch from it. It's it's sweet, almost caramelly. It tastes a bit like toffee, actually. It's beautiful. That is a really lovely piece of cheese. Um. Mmm. Oh, that's fabulous. For someone who didn't like Dutch cheeses when they were young, if I didn't did like too many cheeses when I was young actually. Someone who didn't like Dutch cheeses when he was young. That is particularly delicious. That is really lovely. So this is um, um, an extra mature, extra mature Gouda, or vintage Gouda, sorry, Yauda. Um, and you'll notice also, I've put some other bits on the board here. They're not, they're not purely for decoration. They are bits that would be quite nice to give you something else to nibble. And they also um, provide variations in texture and taste and flavor and everything else. So uh, we've got some apple, we've got some pear. Um, I've got a bit of um, beautiful um, chorizo on here. And we have got um, some walnuts over here and also some almonds oh. some almonds try and nibble an almond in between and then I have to say I'm gonna go straight into the manchego now again this idea of eating them from soft to hard finishing with the blue I find a bit strange yes you could base that on Flavor intensity of the flavor, yes, blue cheese is generally reasonably strong, but that's a garlic and herb rule, and it is the softest cheese here. So, you would start by giving your poor palate heavy, herby, rich, fragrant, garlicky cheese, and then moving on to something softer. So, that doesn't make any sense at all, does it? Okay, I'm going to have a nice piece of this manchego. So, I am particularly fond of manchego. We've done sheep's cheeses before. If you check out the other video. Um, oh, again, a beautiful piece of cheese. Also, £1.79. For £1.79, that is a really excellent cheese. Several of the cheeses here are um, cheeses with a protected designation. So we have the Manchego. This is uh, a gorgeous Brie de Mo. And this is the ever fabulous Gorgonzola. So these cheeses were all really, really reasonably priced and are all excellent cheeses. They've been out for about an hour to breathe because they, they were obviously, they're in smaller pieces, they've not been cut at a cheese counter, so they've been wrapped in plastic for a while. So it's nice to get them, have a bit of air, but let's try this one. Mmm. Mmm. There's so much going on with sheep cheeses. It's beautiful. It's tart, but it's also sweet. It's got this lovely, lovely texture to it where it just, it's nice and firm, but it, it just gives as soon as you bite it. Mmm. Absolutely gorgeous. Big fan of Manchego. Moving on to our, should we say, grown up cheese board. We have one here. 
the beautiful Brie de Meaux. I cut a little bit of this because I thought it might be easier for people who, you know, they're maybe not quite sure how to attack it with it being a very uh, mature piece of Brie. A lovely young Somerset Brie or something, you could just whip a piece off. It's almost the same colour all the way through, but this is looking very buttery in the middle. We're actually even getting a few little bubbles in there. Um, and this this was standing upright. Wow, look at that. This was standing upright, and I cut these. These were three separate pieces, which now appear to be one piece. So I think the best thing to do is probably going to be to try and lift one of these if I can. Oh, look at that. Need a spoon to eat it with. Oh, here we go. Mmm. Oh. Oh, no. The bloom on here is um, much more... Um, much more evolved than you would get on a very young brie so it's starting to um, thicken up and become a, a definite crust this is giving way and trying to escape slowly from my fingers um, the smell is the nose is much more uh, similar to uh, a camembert and it's got that slight cabbagey kind of um, cabbagey kind of thing going on. Um, I think we should try it. Mmm. Uh, oh, dear. Despite the smell and the appearance, the fact that it's trying to escape, there was nothing harsh in the taste of it at all. It's beautiful, it's rich. And still these lovely, lovely acidic notes in there as well. Um, the dryness of the rind compared with the gooiness of the interior is um, is quite something as well. It's quite a nice contrast. I'm going to try and pick this up by hand. Let's see what we can do. Come on. Yeah. No, it doesn't really want to go, does it? Hmm. Uh, much fabulous. So, if we are very conservative here and we say that these were two pounds each, it's two, four, six, eight, ten, ten pounds, you've got five stonking cheeses for a cheese board for Christmas, and this will this will serve a few people as well. I mean, I have quite a large cheese appetite, but um, you probably. You get at least 10 people, I would think. I mean, imagine eating half of one of these each. I think most people would not do that. Most people would have smaller amounts. I mean, obviously, I'm going to finish these off, but it's just me. Um, okay, let's have a little piece of apple afterwards, and we will try. Mmm. We will move on, try our Gorgonzola. Um, so this is um, Gorgonzola DOP. It has also has a protected designation. It's a fabulous cheese. It's one of the first blue cheeses I really learned to appreciate when I was younger. So um, there's a special little category with blue cheeses because you have the harder blue cheese, the Shropshire Blue, the Stilton, obviously, there's also there's also this other category where they kind of they're much moister cheeses so there's uh, Danish blue and gorgonzola um, I, they're really for me they're really in a sort of different class of their own because I'm not saying that they're better or worse just very different you can't really compare compare say a Dorset Blue Vinny with Gorgonzola because they're really quite different. It's like trying to compare 
um, cheddar with manchego. They're sort of, well, they're, they're both yellow and they're reasonably firm cheeses, but that's pretty much where the similarity ends. So I think we will try a nice piece of this gorgonzola. So, um, again, you can see that the marks through the gorgonzola where the, um, the little aeration channels here for the, um, the penicillin to, uh, get some air, be able to breathe and grow. And, um, the nose is actually very mild on it. It's, it's a very moist cheese. This one, very, very moist. It usually comes in um, a little plastic wedge, I think, to try and keep that moisture in. I've ne it's not a cheese I've ever seen in a big wheel. Not, not here, anyway. Um, let's give it a try. It's super soft, super, super soft, like um, it's just short of being um, clotted cream. Um, oh, the, um, the penicillin growth in it, the, the, blue, the blue vein that grows through is, um, is very mild, really, really mild. It's not, there's nothing offensive in Gorgonzola at all. If you are someone who believes that they don't like blue cheese I urge you to try Gorgonzola um, another one might be Cambozola if you can get Cambozola it's um it's kind of the love child of uh, Brie and Gorgonzola where you have a yeast cheese with a vein in it again very very mild and a super flavor this um this gorgonzola doesn't have anything offensive about it at all. A Stilton, though I love Stilton, a Stilton can be quite tart. It can be quite strong. Um, around the edges, it can be a little dry sometimes. So and it's also quite firm. So this is precisely the opposite. So, hmm. It's beautifully mild, beautifully mild. It's nowhere near as strong as um, even say um, Santa Gur or any of the other very soft blue cheeses. It's also it's milder than a Danish blue, I would say, but mm, the same kind of texture. God, it's gorgeous. Mm. You could eat quite a lot of that cheese, I think. That is a fabulous cheese. Okay, before we move on to our final cheese over here, um, I am gonna nibble a few little bits. Nice piece of pear. Mm. The pear is really juicy, that's particularly nice. Almost like cleansing the palate. So, our final cheese is not really a distinctive cheese in terms of being cheddar, brie. Um, it's it's ge a general soft cheese which has been blended to produce a soft cheese product. Um, can still be extremely tasty though but being being so young it will most likely go quite well with many different things so um this little piece on the side here with some herby oh the garlic's really coming through but it's again it's not offensive, it's not a strong garlic. But let's give it a try. Mm. It's 
yeah beautiful that is the only one I would say that probably needs to go on something I'd probably eat that on a cracker on some crisp bread on some heavy toast or something like that all the others I'd be quite happy to eat as they are um, with the little nibbles in between just a change of flavors but mmm super Jesus let's just try a little experiment here let's try so we've had I've had some um, chorizo and I'm gonna try a reasonable piece of this mm. Now, I'm going to follow on to my next softish cheese. We have ruined it. It now tastes a bit too salty, a bit too strong, and it still tastes of garlic and herbs. So, mmm. I would completely ignore this bizarre advice to go from soft to hard and then on to blue. Eat them in the order you are. Um, which for me is probably going to be another piece of brie. I do like brie. Especially when it's as badly behaved as this one. Uh, oh, come here. Oh, look at that. The actual um, bloom rind there is, is breaking under its own weight. Uh, mm. Gorgeous. So again, if you've been put off by cheese because of the price of some of the nicer cheeses and you think, mm, maybe I'll just stick to cheddar because I know it. I don't want to try any of the other bits. What if I don't like it? If you buy these, chances are someone in your family is going to like one of these cheeses. I'd go for it. Just try one. Just get one of them. Try the Manchego. How anyone could not like Manchego is beyond me. But, mmm. Really lovely. God, that's gorgeous. That is really lovely. Again, quite different because we've come, we've had some of the other cheeses. It doesn't quite taste the same as it did when I hit it first time around, which was second cheese in. Mmm. Gosh, that is good. Um, okay. Four. Mm. Golly, that's really tasty. I am planning to do for the next video my ultimate cheese board. Now... I've had to put some limits on this because not only could it be an extraordinarily expensive experience, but how can you possibly limit it? There would be 30 cheeses on there or something and it would, it would be the size of a pool table. So what I've decided to do is follow something like I've got here. So I've got a very soft, a semi-soft, semi-hard, a bloom bloom rind cheese and a blue cheese and possibly a little wild card in there as well um, I'm gonna see if I can build the best cheese board that I can do using only one from each of these categories okay folks thank you so much for watching again if you've enjoyed this please like share on social media and if you've got any questions or comments or 
you know, you're just really unhappy with the way I pronounced <laughs> Yelda Gouda. Um, yeah, please leave comments below uh, and let me know what you think. Um, if you've got your own cheese channel, let me know. Maybe we can do some cheese together. That'd be great. Um, the cheese always tastes better with company. So, yeah, thank you very much. And I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.